Hey there folks, just going to share with you my latest update uh, with the Bobot kit I've been working through. As you can see, I've now finally added on the whiskers. Uh, this allows me to do, or allows me to program the bot to uh, escape corners, uh, navigate obstacles, uh, do, you know, kind of interact with the environment through uh, some basic, uh, shockingly basic, uh, uh, bits. So as you see, the I'm not sure we can get really good here, but the whiskers themselves are attached to each of these posts. And from what I understand, these are uh, grounded. And what happens is that, and get in here a little bit, these little spiky things here, uh, What uh, when the Bobot's turned on, there's a current running uh, through um, through the switches, and, or through, you know, through the breadboard here, and perpetually is feeding a current with that. What happens is if, uh, let's see if we get this one here, is it hits a wall or hits an obstacle, this uh, wire grounds that out and switches the bit from on to off. It's basic binary uh, registry that I have there. It's pretty cool, and I have it set up where these, these LEDs would also tell me which side was hit. In theory, the code I have running in there would allow it, uh, if it hit full on, to do a reverse and like a U-turn, but I'm finding a little hard with the code to uh, get timed right because if one hits before the other and they both don't exactly simultaneously make that connection and break it, uh, break the current, then uh, it only picks up one side or the other. You know, not terribly uh, concerning at this level of a kit, but you know, pretty amusing as it is. Let's see, plug it in here and So there's a noise snowing uh, uh, sound, but see if I hit that, oh, the light turns on. Hit that, light turns on. Um, eventually press on both of them, get both lights turn on. Uh, let's see if I can make this thing uh, bounce off of an obstacle. See what happens. Let's see. Pretty nifty. So this is actually was one of the more uh, simplistic uh, add-ons for the whole uh, process. And I'll show you the code here in a bit. And you can get some pretty funky things in terms of uh, where you want to, like how you want your your Bobot to interact with the environment. There's a lot of go-tos and a lot of switches, or a lot of go-to and sub-statements, where you would have it, you know, basic uh, three-part if-else statement. If this one's hit, go to this separate team. This one's hit, go to that subroutine. If both of them are hit, do something else. And if nothing is being hit, then just continue to drive forward. And I looked at it online, there are people who are doing things with uh, variable, variable uh, variables to count how many times it got stuck in a corner or if it bounced off something. Uh, you yeah, know, it's not too bad. So let's move on and see what goes from there. Hey, everybody, here looking at what the code we'll be using, for, uh, using here shortly. This is a basic standard stamp form we saw before. Uh, we have our uh, declarations at the top in terms of what board we're using and what library we're using. So it knows where to, you know, to highlight where it's at. Our debug out for the console. A variable we'll be using later for for loops. And then the program, of course, always starts with making a noise that says it's reset. The main part of this bit is using an infinite do while loop with a variable if then else's and use of subroutines. Of course, not a big fan of go to subs, but you know that's the way the nature of the language works. If remember right, the Bobot whiskers, uh, if it's not being pressed, there's a current constantly going through that. So these variables right here are always going to be uh, one until something interrupts it, i.e. the whisker touches the contact, it grounds it out, and switches it off. So, pretty self-explanatory what's going on here. If both whiskers are touched at the same time, we turn on our LEDs, we go do our backup routine, and we turn left twice, uh, basically backing up and doing a 180. Uh, 
if one if this one uh, turns off, then we turn right and back up, or back up and turn right, back up and turn left. And if nothing else is going on, uh, the current's still going through, we turn off our LEDs and we just go forward. The subroutines are pretty pretty generic looking stuff, uh, you know, in terms of just telling the wheels of which way we need to turn them, how fast, how far, and put a pause in there. Uh, things like the turn left will uh, make it shift, you know, on you know one wheel going one way, one wheel going the other way, uh, and you know, for a set amount of time. Turn right, the same thing, just opposite direction, and reverse is the opposite of going forward. So it's using pretty uh, the standard information we've already known before in terms of how to move our servos and how to uh, drive our little bobot around. This time, it's doing it in a fairly automated fashion. Now, I've seen some pretty complex. Uh, ways of doing this, there's maze challenges if you've had time to set up boards or had some sort of predefined maze already around you. I initially was just using shoes and bag, or the sandbags and shoes and some random Tupperware, uh, uh, CV containers and whatnot, make a little bouncy uh, course for it. Uh, it worked okay for the most part, man, whatever. It was pretty cool. Uh, kind of stoked to get rid of this lab and go to the light sensing, light you know, running away one where we'll be using photovoltaics. Uh, voltaics, thank you. But again, so this lab's done, so uh, I was not really sure how these whole whiskers thing worked. I didn't know it was this simple, but amazing enough, it is. And just imagine that the more expensive and larger robots have the same sort of thing going on, just in a more complex and grandiose scale.